and welcome back or just welcome if you're new here. Today's video is about newborn cloth diapering, our experience and answering the most frequently asked question I get about newborn cloth diapering, which is, is it worth it? Is it worth it to bother to cloth diaper for that newborn phase? And I'm going to cover a whole host of factors based off of our experience and hopefully that will help you make a decision on whether it's worth it for you or not. In this video, I'm going to cover four different newborn cloth diaper types that we tried and that we had, but there are loads of different types of cloth diapers out there. We started cloth diapering from when Elba was two weeks old. I really wanted to start from when she was born. That was my intention. I shipped cloth diapers from South Africa. At 40 weeks, I conceded that our shipping was not getting here in time, and I bought a backup stash that included newborn diapers. I was really stubborn and I did not even purchase <laughs> disposable diapers, but our neighbor, as a gift to us, did purchase us a box of disposable diapers, which came in handy because the backup stash that I purchased, even though they were newborn cloth diapers, they didn't fit when Elba was born. Elba weighed 3.25-ish kgs when she was born, which is a very normal newborn baby size. And those particular, that brand, I think runs on the slightly bigger end of newborn. So we did end up using them, I just couldn't use them from birth. So for the first two weeks she wore disposable diapers, which has given me something to cost compare, which I'll get to later in this video. And then from when our shipping arrived, she's been in cloth diapers ever since and I have not used a single disposable diaper. So my main newborn stash, or what we used for most of the newborn phase, is the Pokoloki flats and the Pokoloki fitted. This is very cute how little they are. These are yours. <laughs> and both of those are worn with a cover that goes over it. And then little newborn booster inners that were used with the flats. And then from three weeks on, we boosted the fitted as well. Well, an extra booster. They already have a booster inside. So one of the great things about the flats, because I was, when we first started cloth diapering, I was like, ugh, I have to learn to fold flats. But actually, it took like maximum three minutes to learn. I will link the video down below that I watched. I watched it once and then from there I could fold flats. My husband watched that video once and he can also fold flats. But back to the great thing about flats is Elba was born with I guess what we would call like skinny legs and flats were amazing in that you can get the perfect fit around any size like your baby has from birth. So for any future babies where we will be cloth diapering from that initial phase, the flats are going to be amazing because they have a perfect fit <laughs> around the legs for whatever, if they're skinny legs, chunky legs, medium sized legs. And then around, I guess like somewhere between two weeks and like three and a half weeks, Elba's legs filled out a lot and still the flats are a great fit. So they continue to be a great fit even until now. One of the considerations that I guess we don't really have experience with is the umbilical cord and cloth diapering. We did naked skin to skin for the first 24 hours, so technically Elba was only in diapers from day two onwards. And from day two to two weeks, she was in disposable diapers, which you just kind of fold down the top when you're dealing with the umbilical cord. So I don't have experience because by the time we put her in cloth diapers, the umbilical cord was no longer an issue. But I guess it's just something you want to consider when you are picking your cloth diaper type is what are you going to do with the umbilical cord area? I know that some cloth diapers specifically have like press studs or something that you can fold them back for the umbilical cord. I don't think any of the brands that we used have. So yeah, not something I have experience with, but a consideration for anyone wanting to use cloth diapers from the beginning. Then one of the biggest comments or hesitations that I hear from people when it comes to cloth diapering and newborn is they say, no, 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 I don't wanna to adjust to motherhood as well as dealing with cloth diapers or learning how to cloth diaper. We honored the first 40 days. So the first 40 days being a very important transition into motherhood. There was a lot that we did to aid in that transition and to create a strong foundation. For me, the type of diaper we used had a minimal impact on my transition into motherhood. 
where honoring the first 40 days had the biggest impact in terms of my physical recovery, as well as my mental state, as well as laying a good foundation for transitioning from maiden to motherhood. I think if the concern is the transition into motherhood, in my experience, there were so many things that made such a big difference. For me, the choice of diapers was not one of them. If anything, it felt quite therapeutic to when I was honoring the first 40 days, very much spending it in what I called our cave, to be prepping those diapers and to be folding them. And it felt really nice to be using that very soft material on my new tiny little newborn. Also because we were honoring the first 40 days, I wasn't really leaving the house unless it was for some very important appointment, which means again, I didn't find it difficult. And now we do leave the house and she does wear cloth diapers when we leave the house. That's just like part of our parenting journey. It's not something I felt like I had to get used to because that's just something we do. I will say that in that very initial postpartum period, I felt like my brain was total mush and was not in a learning phase. I remember that when I had engorgement, I purchased a breast pump to see if I could get some relief. And I was trying to read the instructions and I was like, no, no, my brain doesn't, <laughs> my brain doesn't want to read this right now. So that's just an indication of how much I was not in a learning phase. But with that mush brain, I never had a difficulty with the cloth diapers. It was never difficult for me to figure out folding flats and the laundry part of it. And yeah, none of, none of that. I felt like it was pressure on me whatsoever. So now venturing into the worth it, and I'm gonna cover these in different sections. So the first section I wanna discuss is whether it's worth it for in terms of the baby. So the first thing is with cloth diapers, you don't use a diaper cream. This is a big deal for me because I like to limit the products we use on Elba skin and we don't have to use a diaper cream or a bum cream. She did at some point, but I think she was, still, yeah, she was still in disposables when this happened. She did get a wet rash and then we changed to cloth wipes as well and got a white warmer and we dried that area really nicely and that solved the wet rash problem. I did just in case, because wet rashes is quite common, get a powder that I was comfortable to use and it has flowers in it as opposed to essential oil. So it's a very pure powder with a couple of flowers in. And if it does happen that she gets a wet rash, that's my go-to with powder. I will link the two that I use down below if you wanna check them out. But yeah, so no bum creams and very rarely maybe use a little bit of powder if she gets a, a wet rash and not necessarily a wet rash, just on the booty. So for me, a big deal is not using products unnecessarily on her skin, especially for that newborn phase. Um, and that's when people ask the question, like they want a cloth diaper, but they're thinking about starting it later. For me, it was particularly important to do it at the newborn phase when their skin is so, so sensitive. All right, let's see if you wanna eat. All right, moving on. In terms of a scale of easy to difficult, I think for a newborn, the easiest by far is the fitted. So it's just this with one booster. The fitted, and then the shell goes over, is what I used at night. Because we're doing elimination communication, I changed diapers for at night during the newborn phase. Every time she would wiggle, that would be an indication to me that she'd want to use potty or feed or a diaper change. So because I was doing changes, at night, which some parents might opt not to do. I went with the fitted because they were the fastest and the easiest to do. They're also the easiest to prep because it's literally wash this part, put this part to it, close it up, and then have a cover ready. From three weeks onwards, we did boost these fitted with another little newborn insert. So they had the, the two inners, this one, and the cover. Flats take slightly longer to prep because you need to fold them and then put their insert and then also cover them with a cover. But considering your weather and the size of your baby, flats might be your go-to. Flats dry the fastest compared to the fitted. So there was a time when our dryer stopped working. Flats were our main go-to because they dry so quickly, whereas the fitted takes slightly longer. I personally found that prepping flats is quite a nice activity. It's very relaxing. Whereas when I was prepping pockets and I did go fetch them, when I was prepping pockets, 
I did not find that relaxing. I found that actually to be quite annoying to do. On the topic of washing them though, I'm not going to share my wash routine in this video. There was something not right about my wash routine for a while. So after a couple of weeks of washing it, just the way that I was doing, I did get an ammonia buildup. An ammonia buildup, you can tell when they smell fine, look fine, feel clean. But as soon as baby has weed in them, they have quite like a, an ammonia smell. And that means they've got an ammonia buildup, which I had to get rid of and then try to figure out what was wrong with my wash routine. But I guess the parts that I can share that worked is I had two open laundry baskets. One was for cloth diapers, open meaning they have holes in, and the other one was for our other washing and then the covers I would put in a mesh bag. These have Velcro as well, but I found this Velcro didn't stick to things. So these, I've not felt the need to put them into a mesh bag. However, the covers I did find to protect the Velcro and to protect other things I was washing, I put them in a mesh bag. So I'm not gonna share my wash routine until I feel like I have got it down and I'm 100% sure that what I'm doing is working. Follow my Instagram to see all the different things that I went through to try to figure out what I was doing wrong. And I went through quite a lot of laundry detergents as well. Now back to the diapers. After a few weeks, I remembered because the whole time I was just using the fitted in the flats and I loved them and I didn't even think about wanting to use something else. A few weeks in, I remembered that I had also purchased these and shipped them. These are, I think they're called all-in-ones. They have press studs, whereas these have Velcro. And then they do have one inner, but then they also have the pocket where you can insert. So by the time that I tried them, they had to be on their biggest size to fit. And that was around, I think eight to 10 weeks, which means, this type definitely would not have fit for very long. Also, when I tried them, I didn't like how they fit around the leg. I found it really difficult to get a nice fit around the leg where it wouldn't leak out. And then also what I didn't like about these is I realized, and this I wouldn't have known until I experienced it and tried it. With elimination communication, I change diapers a lot. Not to say that she goes in the diaper a lot, it's that we're facilitating her learning potty and us learning her cues and checking. So I'm checking her diaper quite a lot. I take it off, I put her on the potty very often. And for me, and for me, press studs take a little bit longer than the Velcro. Also the Velcro, I can do one-handed while reaching for the potty, where press studs, they typically take a little bit more effort, well that one came off quickly, to get them open and then to put them on. So personally, these all-in-one pocket type press studs, which I think are probably the most commonly available ones, I purchased these secondhand and shipped them. I didn't like using them. For research purposes and to be able to share an experience, I used them a few times to see if they would grow on me, to see if I could do things to get a better fit, but honestly, I don't like them. So these have been listed on Marketplace to sell because I don't intend to use them for another baby. I also listed all of my next size up ones that are press studs and pockets because I tried them and I also don't like them. So I, I find that I don't like press studs and pockets so much. All right, Elba would like to sleep and I'm going to try finish up this video while she falls asleep in the carrier. We'll see how that goes. So we covered that I don't like the press studs with elimination communication. I'm not sure if I would have liked them if we weren't doing elimination communication. It is a consideration just mentioning it because a lot of diapers do come with the press studs. The flats are closed with a snappy. While putting it on takes a bit of getting used to to do it quickly, Taking it off is super quick. So I just do it one-handed and the cover that goes over the flats is a Velcro. An item that's probably somewhere in the middle between the two that I was using, the flats and the fitted and the pockets that I didn't like using was the newborn ones that I bought here in Canada that didn't fit initially. So you might be able to tell size-wise why there was such a, a difference with them. They're a mixture because they have Velcro at the top and then the press studs here at the bottom, which is the same as the covers that I'm using for the fitted did and the flats. Same issue here. I think that it's a bit difficult to get the perfect 
leg fit relative to the flats, of course, but then also relative to the fitted that I was using. But I did like that the top of them is Velcro. And then the press studs are just used to make them smaller. But even on their smallest size, they didn't fit a 3.2 something kg baby. They are pockets, so they're not the all-in-ones. They have there the pocket that you put those inserts into. I really don't like stuffing pockets. I don't know what it is about it. I just don't enjoy the task. Where's folding? Like I said, very therapeutic for me. Stuffing pockets, not so much. So with these, what I actually did was I would just lie the insert like on top. And for a while that worked because it actually gave me a nicer fit here. But then eventually it started to get too big and also I didn't really like using them that much to continue to use them. But they were, to be honest, fine enough that I would use them once in a while because when I purchased my newborn stash, I purchased those 10 pockets plus I think it's 10 or 15 fitted and then I think 15 flats and covers. I purchased them with the idea that I'd be using all of those but then I ended up not using the pockets. So on days where I didn't necessarily get to doing laundry then I would use these as like the backup and they worked they work fine for that. I would say if you're gonna go with this brand, I'll link it down below, just bear in mind that I think it's for a slightly larger newborn but the benefit of that is they definitely fit longer. So when I was transitioning from the newborn to the next size, these ones I could still use when my other newborns no longer fit. Now back to whether it's worth it and now I'm gonna cover the amount of effort that it takes. And sure, I guess it does take more effort, but it depends, you know, where you're putting your effort because if you're using disposable diapers, you're frequently purchasing disposable diapers. When you're using cloth diapers, you're not frequently buying cloth diapers. So one less effort is shopping for them. But yeah, you do you do more laundry. That That is true. And you also have like um, a time constraint depending on how large your stash is, is how frequently you need to do laundry. And then uh, Elba is exclusively breastfed, so I can't speak for formula poop and whether that's going to be more difficult than breastfed poop. But so far she's only breastfed. We, we don't have solids, so I'll cover what it's like to cloth diaper with solids. But in terms of the poop part, it's really easy. You just rinse it and it comes out. I also like that with cloth diapers, you're not really dealing with rash issues or it's a more of an exception if you're dealing with any kind of reaction to the cloth diaper. Like that's much less than with disposable diapers. And then when I think of effort, especially in the modern world that we live, I have um, a washing machine and a dryer and access to ordering laundry detergent online. I really think with like the modern things we have, cloth diapering is so much less effort. And I often think of my grands who cloth diapered and my mom who cloth diapered on a farm in the Eastern Cape of South Africa in a five year drought with two under two and she cloth diapered. So I feel like a lot of the time when we make the comment of like, no, no, I just need to survive the newborn phase or I just need to cope through the newborn phase. I don't wanna like put added pressure. I think having that mindset without even trying it, I think we might be selling ourselves short just a little bit. Like that's fine if cloth diapering is not your thing. I'm not trying to push it on everybody. I'm just saying that a lot of the time I hear those comments like, no, I won't be able to cope. Like I'm just gonna survive. And I, I don't really agree that we should be looking at parenting as like a survival and a coping thing. So we chose to honor the first 40 days in a country where we had no domestic help and no support. And we did a lot of prep for that. So we'll cover that in another video. Those are the things that made my parenting journey a lot easier in the newborn phase. The choice of diapers for me didn't really play a role. If anything, I felt really good about my choice of cloth diapering in terms of bringing a being into the world and the waste that is produced by disposable diapers as well as what her skin is coming into contact with. And it also felt like a really gentle act when I was healing to sit there and fold diapers. But so me saying in response to people saying, oh, I need to cope or I need to survive the newborn phase, I'm not invalidating difficult experiences in the newborn phase. I'm saying I get that, but I think that there are other areas that we could put our efforts that make a tangible difference to your transition from maiden to motherhood. And I think that we can support women better if we're focusing on the things that make a real 
big difference to that transition, but that is a topic for another video. All I just want to say is I know that lots of people speak about parenting is very scary and very difficult and very challenging and I'm not I'm not saying it's not challenging I'm not saying there aren't things that are really difficult about it but I don't think we're doing anybody any favors when we speak about it as coping surviving and we're already preempting that that's going to be our state of mind and I don't feel that that was my experience and just a very tiny example is that a lot of people will have a baby and they'll be out and about doing things and I can understand why why diapers might feel like a burden if, if that's what you're doing like straight after giving birth straight after transitioning into be it at your first baby or many babies whereas I chose to stay at home for most of the 40 days I left and if you watch my Instagram you'll see how many times I left and why I left the house to go do those certain things and that made a really big difference that I could get into the rhythm of how I wanted to parent and now we go out and about with cloth diapers no problem we are losing daylight fast so I'm gonna get through this next thing in terms of whether they're worth it or not the question I get asked often is for how long does your baby wear newborn cloth diapers. This is obviously going to depend on the type of diaper. Like I showed, of the four different types we use, all of them at a different point fitted better and then stopped fitting. Flats, I think, fit the best from the beginning. The little fitted worked really amazingly. And then the pocket ones we got probably would have fit for a newborn, but she would have outgrown them at about eight weeks or so. And then the other ones didn't fit from the get-go, but they fit for much longer. Like I said, Elba was born as 50th percentile. She did grow at an incredibly rapid rate. And I think within three weeks or so, three, four weeks, she was up to like the 90th percentile in terms of length and weight. So there was an exponential growth, which a lot of babies, you will see this. And I'm not sharing any of this to make like a comparison of like how quickly or slowly babies grow. Babies are different. I'm saying this in terms of an understanding of how long the diapers fitted for Elba. So that all in context is she wore newborn cloth diapers, the fitted and the flats, until she was 12 weeks. From 12 weeks on, I switched to the larger size of fitted and flats. I do have a video where I cover that because there were slightly different elements to that and she started wearing things like a night nappy. So that's essentially for me, how long did the newborn fit? 12 weeks. I could have actually stretched the flats a little bit longer if you change the fold you can make them fit for a longer but I bought my small and my medium sized flats in the same color and I didn't want to confuse them with the laundry so when I packed up my newborn I retired my small flats and brought out my medium flats then another question that ties on to for how long she wore them is the cost component I will link down below some links to companies that have done cost comparisons so you don't just have to take mine but this video is about my experience, so I'm gonna do a cost comparison that is as accurate as I can get it for our experience. Like I said, I was stubborn and I didn't wanna buy disposable diapers. That being said, our neighbor bought us a box of disposable diapers. Specifically, he bought us Pampers Pure, and there comes a hundred of them in the newborn box. Gotta bring out my notes for this one. They currently cost $37.97, and then you need to add 5% GST. So that leaves us with $39.87 per hundred. Now, when Elba was born, we used those, like I said, and she finished a box of those by day 10. That's 100 diapers, she finished in 10 days. So if we then take that she was gonna wear, let's hypothetically say she would have worn those newborn pure Pampers diapers for 12 weeks, that is 84 days. All right, so, and I said that she used around 10 a day. So if I do that rough calculation, in the 12 week period, if we continue to use Pampers Pure, that would have cost us between $335 rounded up to $469.
Now, what I did pay for the diapers that I used, so the Canadian ones that I got, those came free with other ones that I purchased because they had stains and the Velcro was slightly worn. So I can't factor in what they cost. Also, I only use them every now and again. But then if we look at the ones that I primarily used that were my main ones is I have the eight covers. So that was, I purchased them unfortunately in RAND, so we're gonna have to, to do that conversion. I paid 1,080 Rand for the covers. For all of the fitted, I paid 1,165. For the flats, I paid 1,650. So that is a total of 3,895 Rand. I paid for the main stash that I used. Converting that to $2 with today's exchange is $402. So that means that if we do that cost comparison just for one newborn is I might have even spent more money on disposable diapers than I spent on the newborn reusable diapers for my stash. Now that bears in mind, I am not being fair to that calculation in the sense that I also purchased many different laundry detergents to try different laundry detergents and I'm not factoring in the increase in our utility bill as a result of doing laundry more often. So bear in mind, this is obviously a very rough cost comparison. I'm doing as best as I can to try to illustrate whether for me, my experience, what we went through, whether financially it is worth it or not. But then the other hand, what we do need to consider with cloth diapers is a disposable diaper you use, you throw it away, goes to the landfill, or if you're buying even more fancy ones, maybe, hopefully, they're compostable. But the ones that I purchased, we're going straight to the landfill. So you use it and literally your baby does their business, goes to the landfill, complete waste there. Whereas the cloth diaper is, in my case, the ones that I love are getting packed away for future babies. And that means for a baby, next baby, our cloth diapering journey is obviously definitely financially feasible. But if you're not planning on having any more babies, then you can sell it. You should, based off of how you took care of them, maybe get a decent amount for yours. A lot of the websites that you look at will also say that for newborn phase specifically, depending on obviously how much your baby weighs at birth and how quickly they grow out of it, uh, you might be slightly paying more for cloth diapers, but if you intend to have one more than one baby, it should work out cheaper in the long run to use cloth diapers than disposable diapers during the newborn phase. After newborn phase, I'm pretty sure every single calculation I've ever seen says that cloth diapering is financially, it is less of a cost burden to you as a parent if you use cloth diapers versus disposable diapers. Then I want to end off with a couple of final practical considerations that may be helpful for you in terms of making your decision. One is when we, we moved from South Africa to Canada, Canada, Calgary specifically, let me not speak on behalf of the entire Canada, it's a huge place, has hard water. When you have hard water, you need to wash your cloth diapers differently. Shortly before Elba was born, we installed a water softener and filters onto our mains. So we don't have the issue of hard water. I do think that that's something worth considering if you're in a cloth diaper and you live in an area with hard water is that's gonna change up your washing routine. Then the other thing, um, and this is a big deterrent for I think a lot of parents is yeah, cloth diaper is a bulkier bum. It is, it doesn't really bother me. We purchased vest extenders and for the most part works perfectly when you go to a shop, just remember to take them with. Uh, so we bought a lot of our stuff secondhand, like a lot of the newborn clothing because they grow out of it so quickly. So I would just take the vest extenders with and check whether they fit those vests. I, just if you're interested, I will link down below here in Canada, the clothing that I find has worked the best for a bulkier bum. They're slightly more stretchy and then they do also fit the vest extenders that I have, which I like because some brands, they have different press studs so then the vest extenders don't fit. With pants and those like sleepers, I think they're called, typically we would just need to size up a little. But because Alba is so tall, we've needed to size up from when she had her little growth spurt there. We've constantly needed to, to size up and size up. So one of my favorite things, it might not look so stylish, but it's amazing for me with elimination communication, with using a carrier, with using cloth diapers, is elbow wears like warmers. And they just, they work so well for me. And they're so easy at night if I check and she's a little bit hot or a little bit cold to put them on and I don't have to worry about the bulkier bum. So she does also have pants and tights and all that other stuff, but my go-to because of the bulkier bum elimination communication and just practicality 
is like warmers. And that is a tip I got from another cloth mom. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you for, you know, if you made it this far, bearing with me with filming this with Elba with me. I do appreciate that. I hope it's not too distracting for you. I hope that this gave you a lot of things to consider whether cloth diapering is going to work for you. And if it's going to work for you, where do you want to put your money, your investment? What type of cloth diapers do you want to get? What's going to work for your family, your washing routine? How many do you want to get? Your budget, all of those things. So this is not me making the assumption that what worked for us is going to work for you. But I'm hoping that through sharing my experience, because I know when I watched other people's videos, it was very helpful and probably could have watched more, but we were moving countries. And I think that had I watched more cloth diaper videos for elimination communication, I would have known that buying the press studs is not going to be my favorite because so far when I speak to other moms, not that I know many, doing elimination communication or I watch videos, it does seem that many moms don't don't like the pockets with, with the press studs for that because of how often we need to take it on and off and how quickly you need to get it off because between signal and potty, very short time frame. So anyway, I would uh, recommend watch lots of videos and then make up your mind about what works for you and then still have your experience. And the nice thing is that if you do purchase something that doesn't work for you, likely is check Facebook. There are usually community-based, area-based Facebook groups where you can hopefully sell what doesn't work for you and your family. I have already filmed and it will be up shortly what we used after the newborn phase or so what we are currently using, which is the medium-sized ones. Again, I really like the flats and the fitted, so it's a lot of that, but I show you more of the added elements to it, as well as what we use at night now. Like I said, pockets didn't work for me, so I, uh, had, I had many, many pockets to use for the next phase, but uh, they're listed on Marketplace to so. sell. And then for the final size, I have, because I really like Pokoloki, I do typically like to support local, but because I've really grown to like these, I did place an order from South Africa, so they are currently being shipped and they include a different new type that Pokoloki is making, but also something I'm very excited about in terms of elimination communication. So if you want to see that, just remember to subscribe and that video will come out as soon as they arrive. And then I'll share my experience for when we use them. Please let me know if you've got questions in the comments down below. If you are a cloth diaper mom and you were just watching this like sense of community or or just wanting to see someone else's experience and you had a vastly different experience and you've got something valuable or that you think is useful for other moms to share, please comment that down below so that moms get different opinions on what's gonna work because you know my journey is not your journey but I'm sharing my experience nonetheless with the hope that it is valuable. So if you like this video, please like this video and then I'll see you in my next video.